Welcome to NSAE Nuggets series, a series of live talks on topics relating to active aging. This live talks will take place every Tuesday and Friday at 2 p.m. here on C3A's Facebook page. You can share this live video with your family and friends too. After the live session, this video will be made available on both our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Yeah, good afternoon, viewers. Uh, today, you're going to listen to a, um, a topic, Nutrition for Optimum Health. I think it's very apt at this moment when we all are fighting against COVID. Everyone has in your mind, you know, what shall we eat to keep ourselves healthy at our optimum, at our best? So in today's uh, topic, uh, we'll be covering the following. Okay, before I go on to the, uh, the, the titles which I'll be showing you, you can see uh, the outline of my presentation will be eating healthy. Why is it so important? And uh, what's a balanced diet? Do you know about micronutrients, macronutrients? Uh, like how do we eat healthy by using the plate concept? What is exercise nutrition? Is it different from just keeping yourself physically active? And what is mindless eating? So uh, quite a bit to cover. So we should, we'll, we'll go through one by one. So before we start, I want you all to think any food which you love the most, it can be one of your top three foods, any food you love the most. And every time before you eat this food, do you really think whether is it nutritious for you? How is it going to affect your health? In what way is it going to affect? Just think of it. Then by the end of the topic, you will you can decide whether is this food, the one you love to eat, what are the nutrients in these foods? Okay, now a small, like, like an icebreaker. Find out which of the foods they do not have any carbohydrates. You all know what are carbohydrates are carbs. Just think which are the foods which are not don't have any carbs. Just take a few seconds to think. I have given you an example. You know, I have circled egg here. You know, what do you think? Do you think eggs have carbs or they do not have carbs? Okay, so let's see. One by one, let me go through. How about milk? Milk is an animal product. Do you think it has carbs? Soybean milk. You have coconut milk. You have uh, your uh, salted uh, sunflower seeds. You have your green bean, and salmon is here, a piece of meat, your nuts, Philadelphia cream cheese is here, your fish balls, sausages, you have the uh, sugar-free jam. You may think sugar-free jam, yes, they don't have carbs, okay, or, or avocados, but uh, so many items. Let's look at the answers. Okay, you can see salmon, your, your steak, butter, they all don't have carbs. Okay, because what is very common among these four foods is they are all foods from animal origin. What is very different here is milk. Milk is also for animal origin, but milk is baby's first food, you know, breast milk. After that, maybe you go for formula milk and all other types of milk. And we use milk for most of our food, right? So in this case, milk, does it have carbs? Yes, it has carbs. It has a type of carbs, which we call it as lactose. But other than that, when you look at sausages, you may think, oh, this is also meat-based or it can be chicken sausage. But they do contain carbs because when they make sausages, they use a lot of fillers and these contain carbs. Sugar-free jam is made from fruits and fruits are natural source of carbs. And when you look at avocados, we call it as butter fruit. Again, you may think they don't have, but they have carbs but not very high amounts like your bananas, but they do contain carbs. Coconut milk, it is a very high source of saturated fat, but still it also contains carbs. Even fish ball, you know, the name says fish ball, but when you make this fish ball, maybe more than like, let's say 30, 20% is again carbs. So carbs are everywhere. Now let's go into why should we eat healthy? Why is it so important? Okay, every time, we eat, okay, it can be a drink or it can be a main meal or it can be a snack, but always we need to remember you are either feeding a disease or we are fighting it. So the type of foods you choose, decide this. Now, why is it so important? Because everything boils down to 
what's your BMI? So wherever you go, they ask you, what's your BMI? So BMI is a very crude indicator of your obesity. But the best is your waist, hip, uh, waist circumference. So if your, uh, you can say your abdominal fat is very high, you have central obesity. This leads to a lot of diseases. You can see it leads to your heart disease, cardiovascular diseases, certain types of cancers. And then you can see diabetes. You know, Singapore is already fighting against diabetes. Even before we started fighting against COVID-19, we are fighting against diabetes. All this is due to a simple problem is we are not choosing the right foods. Okay, again, we Asians, we have even more problems. Why? Because we are, okay, we are thin on the outside. Any Caucasian looks at us, they think, oh, Asians are very slim and slender. But that's what we call as thin on the outside, fat on the inside, or we call it a trophy. Why is that so? Because the way we are built, we, have, we may have smaller body frame, but internally we have a lot of visceral fat. So this poses a risk or it increases the risk factor in getting many, many uh, chronic diseases. So again, in just 30 years time, in 2050, when you look at it, WHO predicts 50% of the world's population will suffer from at least one chronic disease. In fact, in your family, there are four in your family, two will have some type of disease. So it's very hard to find even people around you who are super healthy, no disease at all. But you can do it when we start now. Right now, you have to change your lifestyle. So what's wrong exactly? What are we doing? Are we choosing the right foods? Are, are foods only the culprit or is it due to lack of physical activity? Are we exercising enough? But you can see 95% of the chronic diseases are caused by the food choice. You may think, oh, I eat this piece of, uh, let's say, a pizza or I eat a donut. I need to walk 45 minutes. If everything we relate to uh, climbing steps and walking and doing exercises, then in that case, whatever we eat, the whole day you will be on your treadmill. So that's the reason why you need to choose your food right. Okay, is there a solution to all these problems? Okay, we can see there is a very simple solution, which is nutrition. Nutrition is the key to health. And so now, what are nutrients? Okay, nutrients are nothing but they are present in the food you eat. Okay, so these nutrients are substances. They are found in the food and you, your body definitely needs them. You need them for many functions. One of the major ones is to fuel your energy. For us to even do a simple task to keep ourselves alive, we need these nutrients and help to grow, but not for adults. Adults, when we grow, we grow horizontally. We don't want that. But for kids, when they are the growing age, you need certain nutrients. But for us, when you are in adulthood, what we need is we need certain nutrients to repair ourselves in order to maintain your body functions, all these things. Now, what are the six essential nutrients? The first one, you have the macronutrients, which are the big nutrients, which is your carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Okay? Carbohydrates, protein, fat. I always remember this. How do you remember? CPF. I think we all know, Singaporeans, we will never forget CPF. So that's the same thing. Carbohydrate, protein, fat. Okay? Then we have the vitamins, minerals, water. Okay, there's always a controversy, is water a nutrient? But without water, you cannot even carry your nutrients around your body. So now let's look at one by one. What are the different nutrients? I will not have time to touch on micronutrients. So that also tells, us, tells you, you sign up on our course, you'll be learning more. So now, in a plate of chicken rice, which is one of our national dishes, can you identify the macronutrients in chicken rice? Okay. Okay, let us see. Let's do it together. So the first one, you can see rice. Rice, you all know it is carbohydrates, right? And you have your chicken, which is protein. And protein as well as there is fat. And then you have your, in the case of rice, chicken rice is very unique and it's so flavorful because you're cooking with chicken fat, right? Chicken stock. So that also has fat. So what happens to our micronutrients, vitamins and minerals. Do we even have that in this plate of chicken rice? There is little bit, you can see our achar sitting there, but again, it's processed, means our preserved vegetables. And then you have, unless otherwise this achar is freshly prepared. You have your piece of cucumber and your, your uh, 
tomatoes. These may give you a little bit of micronutrients. Now, when we go on with types of carbs, you have two types. You can see the simple carbohydrates. Why is it called a simple? Because your body can easily digest. Very simple to digest. So all your sugars come under this category. And then when you took, uh, look at complex carbs, your body takes time to digest. This is all your staples, your bread, your rice, your pasta, your potatoes, then your beans, all these things come under your complex carbs. Then under the complex carbs, we have, which I, I'll be touching base in pretty, in, in a few seconds, which is your dietary fiber. Okay, so remember this term, dietary fiber. Okay, now, food sources of carbohydrates. What are the food sources? Okay, again, remember your staple. Anything your staple, anything can be in your Chinese, your Malay, Indian cuisine, your rice. Okay, rice is your carbohydrate. Pasta, carbohydrate. Noodles, carbohydrates. Okay, even your biscuits you eat as a snack is carbohydrates. Then you look at your beans, legumes or lentils. All these things have very good source of slowly digestible carbohydrates, or which is called as low glycemic index carbs. And you have fruits, which are again easily digested carbs especially if the fruits are very fully ripened and these contain a substantial source of carbs. That's the reason why, you know, runners, before their activity, they eat uh, banana and run because why it gives an immediate release of your sugars, your glucose, then your vegetables contain carbohydrates. And then your milk and milk products, very good source of carbohydrates as well. Okay, so now you know every time you eat a meal, you know what are carbs. Now, how about dietary fiber? Dietary fiber is a type of carbohydrate. It's a complex carbohydrate. But what is very unique about this dietary fiber is your body will not be able to digest it. So that means when you eat fiber, you don't produce any calories. It's something like a calorie-free food. So when you take your lots of fiber, then that means you will not add on calories to your meals. So if you want to lose weight, what you need to do is you need to take fiber-rich foods. And fiber helps in aids in digestion, prevents constipation. It also prevents or reduces the risk of developing heart diseases, diabetes, obesity, and certain types of cancer. And uh, so these are the things which you need to bear in mind when you think of dietary fiber. So there are different types of dietary fiber, the soluble ones and the insoluble fiber. When you talk about soluble fiber, Simple, how do you remember? It forms a gel. It dissolves in water, forms a gel, gel-like fiber. So that means when you eat soluble fiber, it stays in your stomach, forms a gel, and then it binds to glucose, binds to cholesterol, so it's good, right? That's how it, it tries to release glucose slowly when you eat fiber-rich foods. Insoluble fiber, what, it does, what does it do? It's insoluble, but it tries to attract water, so it increases the bulk. So it's called as the bulking fiber. So this helps to prevent constipation. So where is your insoluble fiber food found? When you take an apple, as an example, the skin contains insoluble fiber. So eat with your skin on. And the flesh contains soluble fiber. You take your rice, brown rice, the husk, that's why the brown rice, the outer layer has insoluble fiber. It has a lot of phytonutrients. So your vegetables contain insoluble as well as soluble fiber. Okay. When you take oats, contains very good source of soluble fiber, beta glucan. That is why oats lowers cholesterol levels. Next is protein. Now look at protein. Okay. Protein is very, very essential because without protein, you cannot even build a single cell within your body. It helps to build your muscles repairs your body tissues and so on. So what are the food sources of protein? So pro means, okay, that's a very, very, the first or essential, that's the meaning to it. So in this case, everything which is your meat, your fish, your eggs, dairy products contain protein. So how about vegetarians? All your legumes, your nuts, they can eat the nuts, seeds, they contain sources of protein. Your tofu, tempeh, soybean milk, all the, uh, these are all protein-rich sources. So when you think of protein, the quality is very important. If it's a good quality protein, it contains all the essential amino acids. Okay, now portion control of protein is very important. Okay, so what is uh, you need to know about portion control? How do we know this? 
just a palm size is a good a good enough amount or it can be 90 to 120 grams and when you eat your proteins remember to go for lean sauces to remove the excess fat these are some of the tips you have to follow okay and when you look at fat okay without fat this is i'm talking about the fat from foods you need fat to cook your food plus certain food items naturally have high sources of fat which is your butter your vegetable oils your salad dressings your nuts your milk and milk products your cheeses all these have fat again without fat in fact even your brain cannot work you need fat for a lot of your essential body functions especially the formation of certain hormones in order to transport your fat soluble vitamins as well as what is a fat is a major source of energy it gives around 9 kilocalories per gram so what are the types of fat is there something called good bad and ugly yes when you look at the bad fat okay when you look at the worst one which is your saturated fat you choose the wrong types of saturated fat then you clogs your arteries so mostly found your animal foods but sometimes your tropical oils like your palm oil your coconut oil contain high source of saturated fat again there is a debate is coconut oil good so you join our course you will know how how to choose the right fat again when you look at our unsaturated fat sources you have the polyunsaturated fats and the monounsaturates so here again this is nothing but remember this fish and nuts okay so these are your polyunsaturated fat sources simple these two things you remember then there are other sources as well and our vegetarians we have certain foods which are high sources your uh, uh, sources of your mono and uh, polyunsaturated as well I think you have heard about chia seeds and all that. So we'll be touching on that in our class. Now, don't forget about fruits and vegetables. In fact, Health Promotion Board has been emphasizing two plus two. So two fruits, two vegetables. When I talk about two plus two, I'm only talking about whole fruits. Always choose whole fruits and not fruit juices. This is very, very important. Okay, now, other thing, how much carbs? protein and fat. Oh, I'm a 50 year old. How much carbs do I need? How much protein should I take? Should I take my carbs in my morning? Should I spread, spread throughout the day? When do, do, when do I take my fats? You may have all these burning questions. Do I need multivitamin supplements? Do I need to have a dose of zinc for my, uh, uh, like in order to boost my immunity? Do I need to take uh, uh, like uh, other sources of uh, uh, supplements like spirulina to boost my protein intake? So you may have all these questions. It's very hard as in, in this teaser, it's very hard to put everything together. So if you join a one day course, you will have a lot of hands-on activities. So when you leave the course, you will have answers to almost every question. So now we have seen the nutrients, now energy balance. Energy in, energy out. This is so simple. So that means whatever we eat, we really need to burn our calories. Uh, will we be able to do that? Especially now in COVID, we are all stuck indoors. Whatever we eat, do you remember, are we able to burn our calories? So these questions, let us see, energy in and energy out. Are the calories equal? So for example, this is just an example I've given you. I take an apple, a small sized apple, let's say it gives you around 100 calories. I take a drink, it also, a, let's say a soft drink gives 100 calories. Okay, both calories are the same. Are these foods the same? How is the quality? Okay, the same thing. I'm eating a bar of chocolate, a fruit, both same calories. Okay, the quantity may differ, okay? But the calories, the same. But is this, so this again is a lot of difference in the quality of what goes in. Is it quality or quantity? So these are the questions again you have to ask yourself. Next, the other thing is people offer you an apple, a pack of chips. You always have this mind game. Which one should I choose? Your heart says, no, don't touch your chips. You're going to put on weight. It's high in sodium, but still you may go for it because your taste buds. Okay. And it touches all your senses, your texture, the crispy texture in your chips. Will that apple be able to give you? So, so many things, right? Okay, the same thing. So many different types of food. So, you are always making choices. What should I choose? It's very, very hard. So, that's what is mindless eating. So, mindless eating is 
not just you it's mindful plus your environment what choice are you making is your mindless eating concept so we will be teaching you this mindless eating how psychology of eating helps how certain cues and triggers you can avoid to stop overeating and again which plate is better a 10 inch 11 inch dinner plate see i am an indian when you look at your indian plate the thali plate i think i bet it is more than 12 inches or it's a 9 inch dinner plate or you want to go even smaller size which plate is better to me the answer is smaller is better can you see the visual so the smaller the plate your food looks full so when you look at your plate when your plate is full you feel happy already you know your mind says good your plate is full you are able to eat so that is why again psychology of eating comes in so the same thing when you take a bowl when you're serving your breakfast cereal go for smaller sized ones and even when you go for buffet take a smaller plate though then easier for you to also see that you are eating right now the next part is we have seen the major ones then the sidelines is functional foods this is again a very big area functional foods nutraceuticals when you go into any supermarket now you have you can see different bioactive compounds people watch for it try to take foods that rich in omega 3 take foods which are in beta glucan okay inulin added so many marketing claims is turmeric add turmeric it's good for covid okay so so many things so these are your functional foods they can be whole foods or they are modified or some of them contain physiologically active compounds now we have this golden latte which is nothing but milk they add some turmeric inside which is your golden latte is it really functional and it can be a plant and animal origin so many things this is a new area evolving area and it will stay with us because this is a major one which focuses on using bioactives to help us with our nutrition right now we have we have two foods here you have a strawberry and you have blueberries are these functional foods okay yes definitely yes because you can see the color of strawberry okay it has lot of phytochemicals and the case of blueberry it has so much of anthocyanins so these are functional ingredients and they help you to fight against certain diseases okay like that every food you eat we will list down the functional component of it how much should you take for you to benefit strawberries can i stop with five or i should take my full whole pannet of strawberries blueberries should i take 30 grams so all these questions you will get the answer so now physical activity exercise we have talked about eating now we need to talk about how do we move ourselves is physical activity the same as exercise is nutrition going to optimize our physical activity and all these things what do i eat before exercise pre exercise nutrition what do i eat after exercise which is post exercise nutrition and again you choose the wrong foods your exercise is becomes a zero right after you have a workout of 1 hour you go and eat your wrong foods then you're putting back your calories again so you have to be very mindful of that do i need sports drink okay just i'm doing a 45 minute brisk walk do i need my sports drink or who needs it do do you exactly can you make your sports drink at home all these things will be taught in the workshop okay and the best part of it is a hands on cooking session not just cooking this is i should call it as an experiential session because we will create like turn you into mini like you you will know the nutrition you also know the science behind cooking okay so use of functional foods in your recipes healthier cooking options but the same time not compromising on the taste because you always have this equation healthy is not tasty which is very wrong when you leave the course you will know that healthy is tasty okay in fact it is it tastes best okay and then portion control how much do i choose if it's a snack means is it less than 100 calories or can i go up to 200 calories or what are meal replacement can i do intermittent fasting so we have case study sessions on how do you do intermittent fasting how do i do very low calorie diets is it suitable for me or is it a fat diet tips and tricks to choose foods when you go to the supermarket 
when you look at the label, label reading, when you just look at the uh, front of label pack, are you going to choose your foods based on what is the name of the food? Or you can choose based on the nutritional value. So all these things you will be learning as well. So tips and tricks to choose foods will be taught to you. So sign up today. We have actually two courses under the nutrition part and we have many courses under the, uh, uh, like uh, how do you know basics of cooking and so on. But the first one is the nutrition for optimum health. It is a full day course. And the second one is nutrition therapy in the prevention and management of diabetes. So this is not just for people with diabetes, for even for those family members or those people who don't want to get diabetes. Many of us don't want to get diabetes. So this course will even teach you how do you choose the right carbs. When you look at a slice of bread, immediately you will know how much is the carbs there. So we will prepare you for that. So at the end of the course, you will be champions in managing your health. Okay, so thank you all uh, for listening to this uh, session. So I'm sure that at least you have picked up tips. Let me go through three major take-home tips. The first one is whatever you choose, try to choose quality nutrients. So you also have to, don't forget quantity. So portion control comes in. Even if it's a healthier choice, simple product, which is quality, you also need to make sure that you don't overeat. So watch out on portion control and also remember to stay physically active. So follow healthy lifestyle. So the choice is in you and I hope that you make the choice right now at this, at this moment. Thank you so much. If, the, if I remove the saturated fat from my food, like soup and others, does it remove, remove the bad fat? Okay, so this is a very apt question and very practical one. So that means after you cook your soup, then you have to keep it in the refrigerator. Then what happens is the saturated fat will float on top. It solidifies and it floats on top, then you can remove it. It's, it. Then it's okay. You are removing the saturated fat, then that is good. That's a very practical way of removing it. Okay, the question is, is it better to be a vegetarian or vegan? Thus avoid meat or meat products in order to be healthy. So this, to me, it's uh, it depends. I will never say that meat and meat products are unhealthy. It also depends on what type of meat and meat products you choose. For example, lean meat products gives the best protein. But if you decide to be a vegetarian, you also need to choose right uh, uh, amount of protein. Otherwise, you know, you need to choose uh, uh, proper way, like what you call beans and legumes. And you need to pair this with the right amount of carbohydrates. The reason being, you can see all these legumes or pulses and lentils, they have protein, but this protein does not contain all the essential amino acids. So that is why what you need to do is, you need to pair this with carbohydrates and these carbohydrates contain all these limiting amino acids, so it complements. So then it's okay, then you are able to get quality protein. Then any other questions? Um, uh, there is one question is, could you share a bit about non-functional foods? How do you differentiate as a layman? Okay, that's a very good question. So for example, I can never tell any food. This is a very, very clever question. You can say functional, non-functional. Yeah, food has a basic function of providing you with energy, basic uh, function of providing you with the nutrients. Okay, but I, this functional food definition is beyond these basic functions. The basic function is to satisfy your energy, protein, calorie, and so on. But beyond what it offers, that is what is called as functional food. So let me give this example. For example, you have your white rice. The basic function of white rice is to provide you with carbohydrate. That is very basic, okay? That is a given. That's why we are eating, right? We get nutrients. But beyond this, white rice has no other specific uh, uh, beyond the basic nutrition. Whereas when you take brown rice, 
It also gives you the carbs, but you can see the brown rice has this bran, which has these phytochemicals. And these phytochemicals are beyond the basic nutrition. So brown rice is called as a functional food, and I can call white rice as a non-functional food. Okay, so whereas in the case of chicken, chicken is, you all know that the basic function is to provide with protein, energy. So that's not a functional food. Okay, and then uh, other questions. Is it um, good to cook slightly large quantities and freeze? Does the nutritional value become less? That means is the nutrition value compromised? Okay, um, as soon as you cook, so most more than the nutrition, here is the food safety. The food safety shouldn't be compromised. Okay, freezing, most of the time we have done a lot of studies, freezing food does not lower the nutritional value. While cooking, you may lose water-soluble vitamins, especially when you cook and drain, your water-soluble vitamins, some of them will be lost. While cooking, your vitamin C is gone. But as soon as you cook, your protein remains the same. Nothing happens to your carbs, remains the same. Fat is also the same, okay? So what happens is after you cook, you slightly cool it immediately. Try to chill it as fast as you can and then portion it into smaller containers, label it with, when was it cooked? Very, very important. The, the time of cooking, the date, date it, and then use containers which are freeze, thaw, stable. Okay, I repeat it, it should be freeze, thaw, stable. That means after freezing, when you thaw it and when you put into your microwave, it should be safe. So that's very important. So again, make sure that accidentally also you should not switch off your freezer or your refrigerator. So your power supply interruption should not be there. So food safety should not be compromised. And while cooking, make sure you cook in a very healthy way. And if you're freezing something, please freeze only well-cooked items. Undercooked items may have certain microorganisms which are not thoroughly cooked. So when you freeze, some of them can multiply when you are thawing. Then uh, other thing, one question is, in this current COVID situation, how can we attend a one-day course? Okay, we are trying to put together an online course. So we'll be coming up soon. So we'll be, uh, you will be uh, check on C3A website or Tamasek Poly website. You will be uh, getting information on our online one-day course. Uh, we will see how to do in a very creative way, even to show you how to cook healthily. Okay, other question again, very interesting is, how many eggs can children take in a day? My child wants to have egg in different forms three times a day. Oh, no, no. I just told you quality and quantity. Okay, both are important. So eggs, yes, they have the best quality protein. But quantity, even though they are kids, you may think, oh, they are still very young, growing. They can eat anything. No. Because whatever we eat now, actually you're paving way for the future. Okay, so always anything more you eat, it gets converted to body fat. And fat cells or adipocytes are, will they never burst. Okay, your heart vessels can burst, can cause heart attack, but your fat cells can just expand and expand and you will be multiplying many sizes. So even as kids, I think the maximum egg per day is just one. If you can go for two eggs, but again, I don't advise you one egg yolk, you can go for two egg whites. But if they say, if they say like they are, you're doing a lot of exercise, you're building your muscles, in that case, what you can do is, you can maybe, depending on that, depending on the protein requirements, consult a dietitian, and then you know, you know how much uh, protein you should take when you are doing some bodybuilding exercise and so on, muscle building. In that case, it's a different thing. But just for normal people, I think one egg a day should be okay because yolk has cholesterol. And some people, uh, the cholesterol content of the foods will also have an impact on blood cholesterol levels. Then the other question, very interesting. I'm consuming nuts and seeds every morning as my basic breakfast meal. 
with yogurt or oats or beans can i consume uh, that as my first meal is it healthy definitely yes it's very good no problem at all let me break this meal into different parts for example oats oats have carbohydrates they have the best quality fiber beta glucan soluble fiber and then you have your yogurt yogurt has probiotics which is teeming with microorganisms which is again good and then you have nuts which have the healthy fats which has protein and you have seeds also healthy fats they have fiber you know nuts are brain food so when you put all together of course it's a good meal healthy meal but again i repeat this portion control because nuts are very concentrated source of energy so always check how much you are eating and any more questions okay how do we sign up for courses um you go to thamasic polis uh, website i think it's uh, tsa thamasic skills future academy website and then you can uh, or you can go through C c3a website and you can look for our courses or you can email me any no you just go to tp and you search for my name you can email me and i will connect you to the right people okay i also have a one feedback this talk is more advertising promotion rather than nutrition talk um okay i don't agree with this because it is a nutrition talk because we have covered what are carbohydrates what are proteins what are fats because nutrition is a science which has we cannot be teaching what we have learned for almost 7 8 years into 45 minutes because it's a very general topic about how do we optimize your nutrition so that is why we have given you tips of various topics okay even about fiber we have given you tips what is soluble fiber what is insoluble fiber and so on so that is the reason why yes of course a little bit of advertising and this advertising is for your health is to promote your health okay you can ask any question it doesn't mean that i will not tell you oh please find out the answer by signing up no no any question live questions definitely we will be um, uh, giving you the answer straight away okay what are the fruits which are good for people with diabetes this again is my favorite topic okay um when you look at uh, fruits and diabetes this you can see a lot of videos floating around in the uh, Uh, online eat mangoes it prevents diabetes and so on so you should be very careful look the look at the signs behind it first thing fruits are uh, you all agree with me that i think in my uh, presentation mention fruits are a source of carbohydrates okay and especially when you look at fruits easily digestible carbohydrates uh, like take a piece of banana it has carbs when it's not fully ripe it has starch but when it ripens it's converted into carbs very easily digestible same thing with your oranges every fruit but in the case of diabetics the first point you need to bear in mind is every carbohydrate goes into your meal you need to know how much so counting your carbs that's the first thing so in the case of fruit yes fruit have how do i count my carbs in my fruit simple thing when you take an apple okay you have different types of apples you have the fuji apple you have the royal gala apple fuji apple is bigger royal gala is smaller so royal gala is usually around 100 to 120 130 grams whereas a fuji apple is 260 grams do you see the difference double the size so when i mention eat one apple always remember it should be the medium size or small sized apple an apple is good for diabetics the reason is because it is low in glycemic index so when you eat it doesn't spike your sugar levels an apple also has lower in uh, like it has got both soluble and insoluble fibers it has lot of phytochemicals the next question is uh, sorry the next fruit is you can also think other simple tick uh, tip is any fruit 
which is harder to chew, okay, will be good for diabetics. Okay, soft fruits are usually, okay, I'm, I am not, I'm just giving you a very simple tip. I'm not going to each and every fruit. Softer the fruit, mostly it is more carbs, easily digestible carbs. So harder fruits, like you, you know, you pad, you have to really bite it, chew it. You take your guava, which is just ripe, bite it and chew it. So these fruits should be ideal, but the portion control is very, very important. Okay. Okay, let me see any more last question. Okay, can foreigners join the course? Yes, um, the cost actually, no, I don't want to tell the cost now. Can you please check on our website? Because I don't want to give the wrong information. Each course, there is a slightly different, but roughly I can tell you it's around $200 for foreigners. You please check on it. And what is the, maybe one last question, which is very interesting. What is the nutrition we need to take if we are taking depression and anxiety medicine? Okay, this one, is, uh, uh, I cannot be answering here. Maybe you can email me personally because this, um, uh, I can advise you personally on this. Just write to me. My email is bkalpana.tp.edu.sg. But simple tip is because people with anxiety and depression will be taking antidepressants. These antidepressants affect your metabolism. So mostly it uh, leads to weight gain. So the foods you choose, you have to be very careful that it should not affect your, uh, uh, your body weight. Okay, thank you so much. So any questions, please email me. Thank you. Stay tuned for the next session of the NSA E-Nugget series, which goes live every Tuesday and Friday at 2 p.m. on CTRA's Facebook page. You can check out the talk schedule at www.c3a.org.sg and for more resources on how you can age well. For more inquiries, you can call 6478-5026. Thanks for watching. See you soon.